battle is mine, says the Lord. God allows the crisis to teach you that He is there. Without crisis in your life, we're not going to grow. You don't need to fight the enemy. You need to worship God. He will fight the enemy. The battle of tomorrow is won by encountering God today. If you don't encounter God before the battle, guess what? You're going to lose the battle. God is everything to us. Your greatest moments of worship and growth don't happen in the church. This is hard to think about. But in the daily battle, your greatest moment happens in the hospital. Your greatest growth happens when you lose your job. Your greatest growth happens when you lose your house. We don't, we, did we grow from these sermons? We'd like to think we would. But, but we grow from life, life's disappointments. I mean, look at Joshua. When, this is the, the main city. That, if he can take this city, he can take the rest of Israel. I mean, the rest of uh, Canaan. If he can take this city, this is the, the, piv the pivotal point right here. You don't grow in the church. You don't grow in the church sitting in the pew. Don't rely on what you do. Rely on what God does. God is calling you to a life of prayer. You don't have to worry about how to win the battle. And this is right here. This is, people don't like to hear this. You shouldn't worry about how to win the battle. That's none of your business. That's none of our business. Was it Joshua's business how God took out the river? Stopped the river or, or brought down the walls of Jericho? And the rest of this story in Israel at this particular time, period in time, is incredible. That's why I recommend reading the Patriarchs and Prophets, the whole book really. You worry about calling God's presence and let Him worry about the battle. Because He started this good work in you and He is faithful to finish it. There's, we, each of us have our battles. Is God in the middle of your battle? Look to the Lord. Don't look at the walls. It is by faith. Faith is not electricity. Some people would think, they say, oh, I feel good. God loves me. But then all of a sudden, oh, I feel bad. God's not answering my prayers. That's, that's chemistry. God is not, doesn't depend on your chemistry or your feelings. God, regardless of how you feel, no matter how you feel, God loves you. Amen. I, I think that we could take that to the pain. I mean, we don't know. I mean, God loves you just like he, he, when He made the first human being, Adam. His love has not changed for one human being. He loves Hitler as much as he loves Mother Teresa. That is foreign to most people don't understand that. God loves the human race. But does that mean that all of us are going to be in heaven? No, it does not. And why not? And where are we coming to that? The blessings of God without God we want the blessings of God without the God of the blessings. If you want my presence among you, and I read this earlier, search yourself. Search your heart. Confess your sins. Put away your sins. Then I will do wonders among you. I'll stop the Jordan River for you. I will bring you all, I will bring your Jordan walls down. In consecrating yourself, you're saying to God that you have His presence more than His help. Do you want God's presence more than you want God's help? Look at what God has done for the human race. And what we do, what do we do? We put our hand out for more. Hmm. 
what we're doing is not working. I mean, Mrs. White, I mean, oh, I don't want to go there yet, but the, we have prophecy seminars, we have youth meetings, we have marriage seminars, we have financial seminars, we have all these things, all these things that we do, 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 do. It's not working. The only question I have to myself is, am I seeking God in a correct way? Something's wrong. Our plans, what we're doing is not working. I understand that we need to have a plan. But do we run ahead of God? We always, I, I, I'm guilty. I don't have the solution. God is our solution. God does. Amen. Joshua had all he needed for his time. In his time, what did, what did Joshua have for the Word of God? I think this is incredible. The Old Testament. He had the, the books of Moses. How many books did Moses write? He had five. God has provided the counsel we need in His Word. What I mean by all, what do I mean by? What I mean by that, what do I mean by we have His Word? Amos 3 7 says, Surely the Lord does nothing unless He reveals His secrets to His servants, the prophets. Where did the spirit of prophecy come from? God. Amen. From the place, from the same place the scriptures came from. The mind of Christ. I said this when I first started. This first uh, John 4 1 says, test the spirits to see if they're from Christ, to see if they're from God. The one book that I would like to challenge anybody, if you're not an Adventist, take the one book. It's a small book. You can probably read it in, in a day, maybe eight hours. Test the spirits to see if they're from God. God is speaking to your heart. If, if He's speaking to your heart through this little book, then just think of what He could do with the rest of the spirit of prophecy. Early Writings, page 63. I keep this tape in front of my Bible to remind me of the direction that, that I need to take. This is for me. This is what I need to take. And I would recommend that, that we all take this route. It says, There are many precious truths contained in the Word of God, but it is present truth that the flock needs now. Amen. I have seen the danger of messengers running off from important points of present truth to dwell on subjects that are not calculated to unite the flock. We're talking about biblical topics here. It says, to dwell upon biblical to topics that aren't calculated to unite the flock. I reset that so I can make the point. And sanctify the soul. Satan here will take every possible advantage to injure the cause. In this next paragraph, it says, But the subject as the sanctuary in the connection, in connection with the 2300 days, the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus are per perfectly calculated to explain the past Advent movement and to show what our present position is, establish the faith of the doubting, and give certainty to our glorious future. These I have frequently seen were the principal subjects on which the messengers should dwell. Jesus has been waiting for a people for a translation since the beginning of earth's history. That's hard to think about. Enoch. Enoch was taken up. He walked with God. Amen. And God took him. Now, let me back up just a little bit. After reading uh, Early Writings, page 63, 
uh, from Mrs. White, from the Spirit of Prophecy. It says, she said in 1888 that two fellows gave a most precious message. She also said this, she says they were delegated messengers of God with heavenly credentials. Now, if God sent us information through these two men, why would he send it? Just, I mean, I, I'm a little puzzled at this myself, so please, don't shoot the messenger. I believe this is the complete uh, message. But I, 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 and I don't want to, I don't want to question God, and I'm not going to question God. God had a reason to send the Spirit of Prophecy, and He also had a reason to send the message through Wagner and Jones. Does God just all of a sudden? Well, I think I'll just send them a message. No, He had a reason to send the message. He knew for us to prepare ourselves for His soon coming. We would need these messages. Without these messages, men have been trying to come to the conclusion. I see you, Raymond. You want to, I see you want to help me. <laughs> men have tried to come to the conclusion what, of what, what is God doing? And we've had this for thousands of years, and we're still here. It is my understanding that Jesus could have come back for a people any time in history. But there have never been a people ready for translation since the beginning of time. He has never had a people ready. And it's been 6,000 years, and, 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 it, and it's really puzzling to God, I'm sure, because God has been ready for us since He made Adam. We have not been ready. We are not ready. Why are we still here? Because, because we haven't believed what God's told us. Every generation since Adam has been in unbelief. And we're talking about the spirit of prophecy. And we're talking about the 1888 message. We're talking about Wagner and Jones. I've been told that I probably shouldn't use that, that terminology from the pulpit. But... If you look at the Spirit of Prophecy, I think she's got like 50 books. And if we look at Wagner and Jones, they probably got some 200 books. And I would challenge you to take any one of those books and compare it with the Scripture because that's where it points. Mrs. White said, I am a lesser light pointing to a greater light. Wagner and Jones can say the same thing. That's her light pointing to a greater light. I would say, please test the spirits to see if they're from God. Don't take my word for it. Amen. Don't take my word for anything that I just said. You need to go and look for yourself. God told Joshua to cross the Jordan River. It's like, yeah. But I'm going to stop the river so you can cross it. I believe God is preparing our hearts because there's coming a time when they're, they're, the sky is going to part. The river, the, the Red Sea parted, but there will be a time that, and I, I believe it's, we're close, that the sky is going to part. What He's waiting for, what is he waiting for? He's waiting for a generation that believes what he, what he says is true. He's waiting for people that believe what he says. Amen. May it be us. Amen. Our closing song is number 590. I want to ask you one question, Ricky. Yes. Well, what makes that ground holy? God makes it holy. The presence. The presence of God. of God makes it holy. Thank you, Ray. Amen. Amen.